three tests uh, our online class diary or class diary. This is where I will be doing some constructive learning. So this one is for digital marketing. So in the chat box, uh, if possible, please do me a favor there. Uh, just comment with any emoticon face there uh, or any smiley face there. Uh, representing your mood there, uh, tired face if you are tired, happy face if you are happy. Uh, this will confirm that you can, I'm audible on your side and you can see the screen that I'm currently sharing. And so in the chat box, uh, any smiley face there will do. And you will see today we are looking into uh, chapter two. So previously uh, in our last class, we spoke a bit about what is required of you. And in this subject, you must, uh, you should be able to develop what we refer to as a digital marketing plan. And when we develop this mod, uh, uh, this document, we use a framework or a module called so stack planning framework with the first as uh, indicating for situation analysis there. And this is our chapter two. So before you develop this document or you help an organization with a digital marketing plan, you first have to analyze basically what is their situation. The question we ask there is where is the organization at and we manipulate or we analyze the variables of the marketing mix. So you're familiar with the marketing mix variable, product, price, promotion, and we've got eight P's there. On my tutor D2L, what you need is to go to the module page and you go to content. Under content, you come to uh, learning unit number two, which is chapter two and you download the slides. Uh, these are the slides that we'll be using today. So now in the textbook, uh, chapter two starts on page 50. You'll see that chapter two is about digital marketing mix, uh, which is referred to as a remix. And there's a nice quote, the marketer is like chef in the kitchen, a mixture of ingredients. So you think yourself as a chef in the kitchen and you are preparing a very nice meal there. So uh, you will be using the marketing mix, which is a recipe that we are using for us to have a digital marketing mix. So assessment criteria, you've got three assessment criteria there. Number one, we should be able to discuss marketing mix. So this is in a traditional format, what is marketing mix, the elements, and we should be able to also incorporate the digital marketing in the remix. So the product, it stays as an element product, but when you talk about a digital product, what are we talking about? And that's when we incorporate, for example, we're talking about content, or we're talking about the participation there or engagement and so on. We'll be looking at develop proposition to help us understand that part. And then assessment criteria number two, you will see an escrow P of marketing mix, which is partnership is analyzed. Uh, what we remember is that the marketing mix have seven variables up to uh, when we talk about the service. So we talk about product, price, place, promotion, uh, people, physical evidence, as well as the process there. But now in the marketing remix, we also have an SRP that we also analyze, which is referred to as partnership, which hence we talk about eight P's. And then I've just referred to the Sostak planning framework for digital marketing is developed and situation is, anal is analyzed. So when we develop our Sostak planning framework, going back to our online class, you will see once we have analyzed ways the organization at, we can start to look at the objectives and develop new objectives or strategic objectives. And this was chapter one. That's what we discussed in the previous class. 
uh, last week. And before we get to strategy, which is number three, and tactics and actions and control, we're just gonna put our focus on situation analysis for today, which is chapter two. So you've got a little background about the evolution of marketing mix in this slide, indicating that uh, it started around 1949, not so long ago or long ago, depending on how you view it. And uh, American in the American Association Conference, that's whereby they actually theorized and come up with the coin uh, referred to or coining marketing in terms of marketing mix. And this was based on the fourth advert that you see there. What they realize is that for an advert to be effective in that conference, it, it requires to include the certain elements. One of them is the product that you see. Uh, the price, which it's not uh, showing here, uh, promotion as well as place. So that's where by, uh, they started to say, you know what, when we create an advert, we need to manipulate those variables because those are the variables that are working. And in the 1960s, that's when Jeremy McCarthy wrote a, or published an, an article about how that can be done. And that's where we came up with product uh, price, uh, you'll see place promotion as the variables that can be manipulated in marketing. And then in 1981, uh, it was realized by Booms and Peter there in the article that these four variables, if you manipulate them, they are not enough to sell a service because now uh, we're no longer focusing on the product. We also have a service and they extended the marketing mix there to be seven piece and they included a people element that we can also manipulate people, meaning we can change their uniform. It will have an impact on the sales. The process, we can play around the process to make it convenient or to bring more satisfaction to customers. For example, it could be an online process or it could be an app there. And then physical evidence, which was a tangible variable, indicating that uh, when it comes to service, especially things such as education, haircut, uh, pure services, you need some sort of physical evidence for people to actually uh, be influenced to purchase the service. So hence, now we are in the 21st century, we are looking at the eight piece. And we, uh, it's noted now that the previously discussed variables in marketing mix, which is seven piece, they are not sufficient in the 21st century. We, when you develop a digital marketing plan, you cannot do it alone. So the first edition of the textbook that we are using, that's whereby it was first actually written in an academic format, uh, talking about the 8P, which is partnership. And that's whereby we can actually partner with other digital alliances. It's more about accessing big data. For example, if we partner with something such as uh, Facebook and people, when they log into their account and when they make payment, they can simply use sign in process from their Facebook account instead of completing the new application form that works, or we'll need to partner with them in terms of buying keywords like Google search. And then you will see the first two, which is TV and radio, we don't consider them. Uh, when we analyze digital marketing, you'll just remember that we'll be considering mostly the ones that are online, Twitter, Google, Facebook there. So let's start with the first variable. And this variable uh, is product. So now when we develop a digital marketing plan, you will see in the second column, the objective when we uh, try to incorporate the product into the digital mix, we want to offer interaction. And we also want to offer engagement uh, using the online value propositions, which are referred to as, uh, as sixes there. 
So in the textbook, that's on page 59. And what they are trying to indicate here is that usually we are familiar with the physical product. But now because we are online, we usually no longer sell a physical product like a toothpaste or a Coke or anything like that. We are actually selling those two. We are selling interaction and engagement, and we can achieve this by actually selling content. That's the first one. So with the content, if we have an organization, you will see at the bottom of the slide that they talk about, they show you an example of Netflix. So if we have an organization, the content that is sold by an organization can differ. And we analyze what type of content are they selling in a digital media place. And it can be user generated content. And when we're talking about user generated content, we're usually talking about social media here. We're talking about your Facebook. Uh, that's how they actually uh, selling. They're selling content which is generated by other organization, which is generated by individuals. The opposite of user generated is organization content, meaning that consumers, they just watch the content that is already there. And like here on Netflix, we can actually firstly say the content that consumers have is organizational. It's not user generated because you are not looking at the post of other users and so on. Uh, on the Things such as uh, dating apps uh, that will be user generated content again because you'll be looking at other profiles and so on. And then the content we can better classify it as it's either interactive, uh, is it engaging, is it localized? So basically, when we analyze the case study, because usually you'll find case studies and you have to indicate what type of content. It's in the case study. It's possible for you to have a organizational content that is interactive and that is localized because when you look at the slide, here's an example. When you think about maybe a movie such as that one and all these movies, basically they are South African content, meaning that at least there is local content. Is it engaging? No, it's not engaging, so we must define what the term engaging mean. Uh, is it interactive? Uh, yes, it's interactive on Netflix because you are the one who controls. So interactive is about the control, firstly. You are the one who controls the content, meaning you can pause, you can rewind, you can do all that. And secondly, the second part of interactive, it talks about the three characteristics of social media. You'll uh, you'll, you'll always pick up that on social media you can like. That's part of interactive content, meaning I can interact with content. I can comment on the content. I can share the content. So we can judge that. I'm not sure whether uh, Netflix, you are able to rate movies. You are able to uh, actually like certain movies. But if that allows you, we can motivate that it is interactive. Engaging, on other hand, this it's on a higher level. So engaging content, we're meaning about we're talking about content that uh, keeps you on a content. You are focused hundred percent on that content. Meaning, even if your cell phone rings, uh, you can ignore it because you are engaged with content. It could also mean on a level, meaning that it's online. So if you put it on an Gaming platform, it's an online game, meaning you cannot post that content. You cannot control it. You have to actually participate by uh, with other users online. At the same time, online classes are engaging content uh, at some stage. They can be classified there. And then the second C that you have under product is customization. So we analyze whether the content that is sold by an organization can be customized or not. So customization means that uh, we can personalize the content. For example, NetFlorist comes in very good with personalized messages, meaning that I can purchase uh, 
a gift and I can write a message on that gift product ideas and then you will see the configurations uh, mostly they apply when we purchase it could be a product such as a car online and you are able to actually indicate that you want a sunroof or you don't want a sunroof or you want what type of tires and wheels and so on so all that uh, uh, we 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 actually analyzing whether the organization has all this type of content. The more we have our content ticking all the boxes, meaning that it, it it's organization, it's uh, interactive, it's engaging, uh, it allows personalization. It can be uh, changed. Uh, it allows product ideas. Is the more we find it an organization performing well digitally, the less company uh, or content we find, meaning that it, it, it's having less user generation, uh, it's having less interactivity, engaging, you can't personalize it. That's whereby uh, we tend to look at that in terms of that the organization is lacking digitally. So at this stage, we are trying to figure out whether the organization is doing good or is doing bad in terms of a digital platform. So. You will see uh, the third one is community and participation. And with community and participation, uh, this is social proof, uh, the, the reviews, uh, the likes, uh, the shares. So usually when we sell a content online, people buy your product based on the reviews and the likes and the social proof and so on. The more you have that is the more it becomes part of your product. So if your people rate people rate you bad, uh, or they you've got testimonies there and they are good testimonies, that allows more sales and meaning that uh, a person when they buy digital content they no longer buying a uh, quality. They, remember with previous variables you used to think about quality of the product, uh, the packaging of the product. They are buying social proof. So. These variables can also be manipulated, meaning that if we have nice uh, reviews on our Instagram page, we can incorporate that into our own website. So meaning that when a person lands to the, uh, our home page, they can see what other people have said in social media space, and that's, that's part of the product that we are selling. Convenience is on a basic level. Every company that is in a digital media or digital space, uh, it should provide convenience. So on a simple level, convenience means fast and it means easy. So what we are actually uh, selling when we sell a digital product or a digital content, usually those uh, uh, what what we base our price on is also convenience, meaning that you receive free delivery or we can charge on delivery. It might be less, but at the end of the day, it means that the customer is gaining convenience there, which is part of the expectations or the needs of digital customers. They want convenience. Uh, the slide is having only few examples, but with convenience, you can think about other examples. Just uh, don't put the basic one like 24-7 uh, because 24-7, uh, it, it, it's a must. Every website it's, should perform 24-7 at any time. Things such as delivery, which allows convenience. Online payments, uh, they become part of that. And maybe the sign-in process, meaning that you can log in with your Facebook account, and you'll see they call that website design elements. So in the slide, what you see when you think about Netflix, so if it, it says I can change, uh, for example, the layout, I can, uh, uh, I can also change the amount of data that is used uh, when you scream the movies or the TV shows there, those are part of the website design elements, whether it got those five global navigations that you see there, 
And number five is choice. So we can sell our product more to become more premium by giving customers more choice. This could be channels, variety, categories. So if we are analyzing this on a Netflix case study, we will talk about international movies, South African movies, uh, comedy, uh, drama, all the choices that customers have, including TV spot. Okay, uh, I think spot it's on another one, which is show max. So you can see that show max have more choice than Netflix if we compare the two because Netflix doesn't have spot. And the cost reduction, which are usually we give customers online rewards. Uh, it could be guarantees that if anything happens to the product, it's money back guaranteed or the return policies. And usually with cost reduction, we also include things such as the website design elements, like an example whereby a customer allows to download movies when they are online, maybe uh, during uh, their using Wi-Fi and they can watch those movies later when they are not on Wi-Fi or when it does not use mobile data. So if a feature like that, it's in the case study or it's talking about one company is part of cost reductions then. Delivery, if it's free, it becomes part, uh, part of cost uh, reduction there. So anything that saves customers money. So we are actually comparing a person who will go to the mall and a person who will just go to the internet and purchase the products. So all the cost that comes with going to the mall, if they are not in a second example of a person who buys online those are cost reductions in summary so hence you will see delivery a person who goes to the mall maybe will pay for transport fee and then now there's a cost delivery this side because there is no tra uh, transport fee uh, parking fees uh, it could include uh, almost uh, all the costs that are associated with uh, from the consumer journey process when they hear about the product up until they purchase the product so now when you have a case study in your assessment, you'll be dealing mostly with one case study. And that case study, what you need to do is to say under the product, this is what I see what the organization is doing. So under content, you classify it as best as possible. More than one answer here, it does not mean that when is like I've, uh, I've indicated, when is interactive, it cannot be localized. It can also be uh, interactive, localized content. And then you put a practical example. The importance is to show this theory that you see here with the practical example that you read in the case study and so on. So, number two which is price element. Our objective is to offer a range of purchase options. So usually when people buy products in a mall, we'll always compare a person who's more traditional against a digital customer. They are limited in terms of purchase options. Maybe they can only use their Cash, usually it's the most used payment method, or maybe they swipe with using machine there, which is usually credit card, debit cards, and so on. But on an online world, our objective, we are trying to say, if customers cannot use those two options, uh, which is, cash and maybe using a bank card, what other payment options an organization can consider? And when we look into basically the options that we have now is that, how about we offer subscription in an online world and then customers 
usually with the subscription, they have many options that they can take meaning a customer can purchase our content on a yearly basis or on a once-off or on a trial. A subscription can also be free access. So most of the time, what usually happens is that when you have an assessment and you are reading the case study, you will see that it says uh, customers, uh, there is no price to access that website. For example, this could be things such as going to Gumtree case study, going to OLX, going to social media and so on. It's usually free access. So it's part of the module that they are using. Maybe they will make money through ad supported content, meaning that a person will watch videos and so on. So with subscription, what you need to do, you need to indicate what type of subscription is the case study dealing with. So in this case, if we are still dealing with uh, Netflix, you will see trial, it plays a role because usually Netflix, it gives you the first trial, meaning uh, you must finish that trial and you start making a payment. But <laughs> the trick with all those trials is that you already entered your banking details. And they've done quite a lot of research studies to see how much trial uh, affects purchase or how much does trial lead to purchase? How many people cancel their trials and so on? And it was found that in, uh, in most studies, people forget about the trial. So they sign up for a trial, hence they want the banking details for that trial. They hope you forget. It's not because that they, they are so happy uh, or they are so confident that you like the content to cancel the, 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 the subscription. So it was found that most people, they end up paying subscription because uh, they forgot to cancel the trial. It could be also once off payment. Usually with once off payment, uh, we see a subscription whereby you purchase a product online and then that pro uh, product, uh, it gives you a, a license. It could be a software that you purchase and install on your computer and then you pay it once. Uh, it could be uh, when we talk about digital products, usually we talk about three categories or talk about three customer segments that we have there. People online, it's either they are looking to do shopping, that's number one. And with shopping, usually it's a once off. So basically, a person can go to uh, superpalace.com or Shane or any online retail well, then buy a product and pay once and that's it. So it applies there. And the second reason people are motivated to use digital products, they talk about the social part. So they have social needs. And with the social needs, usually we're talking about uh, free access because usually social needs are usually accumulated on social media. So uh, people, uh, they want to bond with others, uh, keep close with their family and so on. And it also includes subscription, which could be something of an online dating app and so on, whereby maybe they pay a subscription monthly like Tinder and so on, that those will be part of an uh, example of social needs. And the last one, it's entertainment. Uh, at the moment, we are focusing on entertainment. And entertainment as in Netflix, people will go online because they want to watch movies, to play games and so on. So when it comes to entertainment, they usually also uh, use once off on certain products, like it could be a game that you purchase and you buy it once. Uh, sometimes they use monthly, like Netflix, you'll pay every monthly. Yearly fees, Usually uh, they are into business to business world. Uh, they also apply to uh, a, a product that you cannot buy on monthly basis. So if it gives you options to say you are saving money by bundling uh, your monthly installment into yearly fees, uh, usually it, it's 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 not a, it's not a separate uh, amount in a sense that you, uh, we we will take monthly. 
we'll, we'll say the subscription is monthly then. So giving you a practical example, it will be like Netflix and Netflix says maybe you pay 99 rand per month, uh, but they allow you to actually uh, pay for one year. And when you pay for that one year, maybe it's at a discounted amount. So if we have such code in the case study, we are able to code yearly fees. So we can also make money in the digital or using a website or selling digital sign, uh, digital content by using pay-per-view module or transaction model. So with pay-per-view, uh, these are usually digital session fees or in-app purchases. WWE is one most one that is making money through pay-per-view services, and they usually have their events uh, uh, which can be screamed online and they purchase those as pay-per-view. This can also apply to in a digital world whereby people are playing games and they have to purchase coins and we call that in-app purchases uh, because they are purchasing through uh, in the app. Usually they pay with their Apple Pay or Google Pay. And then with the bundling, it's whereby we allow consumers to actually group content or channels at the reduced fee. And most of the practical example here, they will come in when you think about things such as DSTV and then they have packages and then those packages, meaning uh, this is DSTV compact and it's having certain channels and this is a lesser uh, a package with certain channels and the fees is less. So bundling, it also works with OLX and Gumtrees. This is whereby, let's say a dealer is advertising their products on Gumtree. Uh, it's advertising their cars. And usually those people are given a showroom, which is kind of like a, a sub page of uh, their own account whereby people can see a lot of their uh, cars in the dealership. So, and then when they pay for visibility, they usually pay for grouped uh, content, which is that showroom there. Add supported content. It's another form of revenue that can be used, or we can use man. Uh, we can we can offer consumers to pay. And usually when we give people free access or when people have free access in a in an uh, organization product, they will be mostly uh, see a lot of adverts and that is ad supported content, meaning that the company makes money through ad supported content. This is whereby you will see at the bottom of the slide towards the right, a picture there, uh, that picture you see, it's an example of ad supported content, whereby uh, someone is playing an online game and it asks them, would you like to watch an ad for coins? And then when they click yes, they get coins in within the game, but they will watch a 30 seconds ad or 15 second ads and so on. YouTube makes a lot of money with ad supported content and it's another practical example that we can talk about. So now when we apply this to Netflix, we see that Netflix, it prides itself by saying consumers, they don't watch adverts or there is no adverts, uninterrupted view. So they cannot use this at the moment or they are not using it. It does not apply to them. And we can have price transparency. With price trans, uh, transparency, what we usually, uh, it's about trying to sell the product through offering refund policies. Uh, we have become transparent about refund that if you are not happy with our product, uh, you get your money back guaranteed or we, you can exchange for a newer item and so on. So if we, it's written in guaranteed formats, meaning that it's on the website, uh, it's under return policies and so on. 
we are very transparent about the price and that will allow people to have less uh, consent uh, when they are uh, buying online. So once again, you are reading the case study. Uh, maybe it's one page or two page. The case study is about one company. In this case, it's about Netflix. What we are trying to achieve here is to see. Remember, we are analyzing. We are not. We are not uh, planning for them or providing objectives for them. We are not making objectives. Meaning. Our voice doesn't matter here. We are just indicating what they are doing currently. So we will say they have a subscription, which is a trial. Monthly fees is 99 rand, depending the case study should give us all that information. Do they have any pay per view transaction? If there is none, we don't even indicate it. It simply means there is a gap. And we can use these gaps when we develop our objectives, which is uh, the second part of digital marketing plan. So looking at the third variable, that is place. And with the place, the marketing mix place, the objective that we have is to offer alternative locations for online access and online transactions. And our goal here, uh, once again, compare someone who's more traditional. This person prefers going to the mall to purchase roads, and this person prefers uh, to purchase this codes on an app and so on. So when you go to the mall, usually your place is the shopping mall, is the retail store, and that's it. So when a company is like that, let's say we have a company or it could be a township place that sells quarter uh, or something or it's, it's it's a car wash any business but it does not have online tools meaning that people they need to go to that physical place to get the products that will be traditional way and when we are saying we are digital marketers and we are providing with a digital marketing plan we are also giving you other places that you can sell to. So the first element, it talks about the access. And the second element, it talks about the payment. So firstly, we understand that the place now it's online. And when it's online, we've got three categories that we have there. It could be at supplier site, which is the company website. But this is just mainly for access. So think about Gumtree, and this will be Gumtree website. If you think about uh, Netflix, this will be supplier site www.netflix.com. What's important here is that when you write this in an assessment, you will have to provide a practical example, you will not be able to say at supplier site company website because this applies to in every company. Practical examples, meaning that your answer is limited to that case study only. Hence, you will have to indicate the website of the company explicitly. So you'll say www. country if it's country, Netflix if it's Netflix. And that's the meaning of practical example because you will. It will you 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 will uh, be assessed a lot, and this is an open book. And when you write your answers, usually you get incorrect answers whereby they say you did you are not practical. It was not practical example. So you can assess yourself to see if your answers are practical enough, or it's a practical example by just thinking: Can I use this answer I've provided here if I'm doing another case study? So if it's written like this, yes, I can use this answer on every case study, meaning it's not practical. 
but as soon as you replace that to limit it to a specific case study, that's what makes it practical. And second access, people can access the information on the app, and these are referred to as intermediary side. So you are familiar with intermediaries in a traditional marketing format. These are middlemen. So on an internet world, uh, online world or digitally, we also have middlemen or intermediaries, and this usually is the iOS, uh, is also Android. So if I'm developing an app and I'm, in, I'm a company, I'm developing an app, maybe uh, you'll see here, they are showing you an example of a WWE and maybe there's a WWE app, uh, it needs to be submitted to Android or Apple, which uh, those are your middle because they will publish your site. If their operating system are down, your app is also down. Hence, it's on intermediary there. So if the case study does indicate that consumers can download the app to watch, we indicate that as our practical example. At customer site, it's very rare, uh, quite rare to, to have an online place and is at customer, site, at customer site. But in theory, what it means is that I want to buy products and I want to buy these products online and I'm buying from another customer. Giving some practical example here, you'll think about Avon products, for example, uh, Herbalife products, which are usually promoted by other customers, and we call them that as brand influencers or brand ambassadors, IFA, for example. Then. And then these people, the only challenge that we have to classify them as, as uh, that a customer can access, can actually uh, access information on, on the site is that they usually just provide their contact details. But if they provide the information on their social media page, like the brand influencers, and the customer is able to learn about Avon products on another customer site, it will be part of affiliation. When it comes to payment, this is where they are lacking. So going back to the point that they're having a challenge, it's that we usually don't classify payment at customer side. That's why you will see you don't have customer side here because they can promote the product online. And there's a customer, if you want those products, they usually have, you have to send them money, which is not online. It's up, uh, most of the time you meet with them and so on. But if it allows you to pay online, uh, that's when we start to see there is a scam there. So it's not a recommended method for payments, but for access to information or for access to promotions, it's a recommended one customer as a site. Payment on the website, if it allows direct credit card payment, a voucher, gift cards. And then uh, at the intermediary site, as a customer, I can pay through PayPal and then PayPal uh, pays to the company or I can use my Apple ID or something such as Google Play, meaning that my wallet is on another platform. It's an intermediary and then their processing payment is not directly there. And going back to the case study we are dealing with, uh, they were showing us earlier on Netflix. And then with the Netflix case study, you will see that you can go to pick and pay and purchase those cards, uh, vouchers. It could be for Netflix, it could be for iTunes. And then you are going to purchase them offline, but you are going to redeem them online uh, and then you go to their website and then you get credit so that's why you see voucher it's on the at the supplier site there if that's a payment method and then the fourth key 
is the promotion element. And with the promotion element, our objective is to integrate communication tools to online. So in this case, we already know have we already have advertising, personal selling, sales promotion, but all these are usually traditional. We just want to integrate them tools to online, meaning when we talk about advertising, we're no longer talking about radio or TV. We're talking about the one that is online, like your pay per click search adverts. And on the slide there, you have an example of a pay per click. Usually uh, it's Google, we purchase keywords. Like a company such as Share Tribe that we see here. It purchase the keywords, build a marketplace, and a user was searching for build a marketplace and their advert shows with that. So that will be advertising online. So we're just analyzing in the case study if they have any advertising online. Biggest mistake you can do here is to put radio advert and TV adverts. So when you deal with digital marketing, we only focus or our whole attention is on digital media place. We don't care about the traditional one. So if they, the case study indicates that a company such as Netflix, it runs an ad on YouTube or maybe you, there's a YouTube campaign whereby people before they watch a music video, they see a Netflix advert there. We will be able to analyze and see advertising and then adver under advertising, Netflix has a banner ad or intermediary ad on YouTube using the ways that are in the case study. So it's also about learning whether the information that you get in the case study will become part of personal selling or sales promotion or public relations or direct mail there. And then you've got personal selling. This one is a bit tricky because the term personal, the term uh, personal, it means face to face, right? So now when you say personal selling and you are talking about an online world, Sometimes they remove the term personal and then they just uh, keep it with selling. So in your textbooks uh, or when you see the literature, you don't see the word personal. It's because of that theory that you cannot say something is personal selling when it's on the internet. It does not make sense. So in this case, we're talking about online chat, for example, uh, it could be uh, visual sales staff, which is uh, a boat that a person can chat with. And then that boat is selling a product or it's explaining the features or is taking a customer through the whole process of signing up and so on. Online chat can be with a physical person, but Usually the online chat, the video chat is part of the online chat that can happen. Could also be a text chat, which is a pop up that up, uh, comes up. We just need to make sure that we understand that the online chat that they are referring to here is not to help customers if they have problem, is to promote the product. So usually the case study will talk about having a video chat feature and that video chat feature allows customers to sort issues that they might have with the organization and in your answers you will find a person putting it under personal selling and it becomes wrong in a sense that uh, the online chat that you are talking about is for people element which we haven't uh, touched yet so the people element uh, the online chat, it also applies there. But if it's under personal selling, it should be to sell products. This will be whereby we get 
uh, telemarketers. So this one is about telemarketers, which they schedule a call and they sell the product to the customer there. Sales promotions. Black Friday, it's one of a practical example of sales promotion that we're mostly familiar with. So sales promotion, if it's online rewards and loyalty schemes, and what we've noticed is that with Black Friday, when you go to online world, like take a lot, uh, macro and so on, you will also see their Black Friday sales. So it becomes part of sales promotion. An example that is on the slide there about spa rewards is part of uh, sales promotion that SPA has. And they've just integrated these communication tools to online because usually people will have a plastic card and now it's no longer a plastic card. It's in an online world. We can still do sales promotion uh, via rewards cards and so on. And then you've got public relations. Uh, public relations, mostly social media that we use. So and and with public relations when we refer to social media obviously most of the time talking about facebook that is used uh, it could also be customer service site like hello peter and so on so what we are trying to indicate here is that usually we've got a PR team in a traditional method and then they release what they refer to as press releases. They have TV media to address the issues. For example, it could be about the KFC scandal where they wash chickens on the floor. It could be about any scandal and then they put proactive measures there. So. In this case, it must be transformed or it must be integrated to online. It should not be a TV media briefing or press release. It should be uh, whereby we release a news article, uh, we respond to social media comments, uh, we go to Hello Peter website and we look at customer reviews. We sort those issues and they change their stars. If they rated us one star, they rate us five stars now. And then we've got direct mail, uh, which can also be used to promote the products. And then with the direct mail, uh, usually we talk about opt-in email. It's important that customers, they have opted in, uh, not an email that goes to the junk or spam folder where we just promote our product by renting a list and so on. So opt-in means that they gave us consent. And then you've got the web or the app inbox. An example of a web or an app inbox on Brightspace, it will be uh, something like this, whereby Brightspace or my Twitter, it's having a message a feature that allows us to actually communicate with the respondents. But once again, it should not be to solve issues. If it's for solving issues, it will fall under people. It should be to sell products. So in that web or inbox, if we send newsletter every month, it will apply them. So we're going to take a pause a bit and come back to our digital marketing plan before we move on to the service piece. And then we're going to quickly look in terms of uh, Netflix as a case study. And now with Netflix, we are analyzing the product first. And when we analyze the product, what we've learned 
And now we are actually doing it in general. So we are not looking at a specific uh, case study. So based on our knowledge or just quickly going to Netflix website, so or looking at that screen shot that was shown in the first slide. So what we've learned is that the product that they have in terms of content, we can say their content is organizational content. And the reason we are saying they have organizational content is because it's motivated by something such as they have maybe Netflix originals whereby is their own TV shows and people watch that. We can say maybe the content is interactive. And The best way to actually also do this is to consider the C's. So the first C is content, so meaning that organizational. And as well as interactive are part of the same point, interactive content. And we can motivate our answers by saying maybe it's interactive content because a customer can pause, uh, they can choose, they can watch uh, trailers if it allows them to do that. Uh, they can rewind, uh, they can forward and so on, meaning that they have control over the content. And you will see we did not say it's user generated. We just did not indicate anything about that. So if it does not apply, there is no need for us to put it in our answers because when someone looks at your situation analysis, he wants to see what is happening, uh, what is done by the organization to actually at least be in a digital media place there. And then when it comes to uh, the second slide uh, or the second value proposition it was telling us about customization, meaning I can customize the movie the way I like and so on. So in this case, if it allows customers to do that, I think it should. meaning that uh, I can sort out uh, maybe the movies or the TV shows. And when I sort out the TV shows, I'm basically saying I want to see comedy or, or I want to see uh, action or sport and so on. So we will be limited our answers will be limited to what's written in the case study. So at this point in time, we are just trying to uh, do it on a general level. Community and participation. Once again, uh, if it does allow it, we will write it down. If there is convenience element, that we can think about. We will include the convenience and we will indicate in terms of uh, convenience that, for example, uh, you can download uh, movies or if it says maybe you can select quality, uh, which maybe it's data usage. So that's about easy, that's about time. And it's also about cost reduction there. One person might say that is cost reduction, they are not wrong.
And then we've already mentioned something about convenience or customization as part of choice. So if someone provided the same practical example and he classified that as choice, they are not wrong because it allows us to say customers have a choice to watch different types of movies and so on. And then when it comes to price, we will also say in this case, we know they have a trial, so that is part of subscription. You'll remember that your assessments are open book, meaning that you'll be having those slides with you, and you are just trying to make sure that you classify what they have in the case study against what is uh, shown on the slide. So under subscription, it's not free access because if it was free access, I would go to Netflix uh, without any credit card or without trial, I'll be able to watch. So free access will apply to things such as OLX, Gumtree and other ones, uh, Facebook and so on. So this one is a trial. And then we also get monthly. If the case study does indicate that maybe there is a 14 days trial. And they also maybe have 99 run per month. Once again, to provide practical example, your goal is to have the first part from the textbook. And the second part is strictly the case study that you are dealing with, meaning all these answers, if I give you a different case study, now it's about Gumtree. Everything is going to change. We're not going to see action on Gumtree. We're not going to see watch pause. We're not going to see 14 days trial and so on. And that's what makes it more practical. Pay-per-view, I don't think we do have anything like that but if someone say under price transparency they are transparent about their price in a sense that maybe they show you different options like you see on the slide and then on the slide there you see that there is a 99 rand it provides you with nothing uh, 139 rand, which is a standard package. It provides you with HD quality and so on. And another person can take the same 14 days trial and say this is also price transparency, uh, meaning that it's price transparency in a sense that a person is able to see what movies Netflix has. before he makes a payment. So remember with price transparency is before we make a, a purchase. So basic standard premium. And then if we're doing it for a case study and this was Netflix under place, firstly, we must talk about access. We've got access at supplier side. And with access at supplier side, in this case, it will be the website. And then we've got also access at intermediary. And now with access as intermediary, we are talking about, for example, the Netflix app. Um, on Google Play, or maybe it's iStore. Or not iStore. Um, 
I think it's apps or something on the iOS. So maybe we can also be as transparent as possible about our operating system. This will be Google Play or Android, for example. And the other one, obviously, it will be maybe using Apple ID so that a person understands where what is our intermediaries for us to have people to access uh, the movies. And then you get payment. At supplier side. And with payment at supplier side, in this case, we will be having if the case study indicated that people can purchase with a credit card, but we know that it, it wants a credit card. Uh, if on the website they can also use maybe the vouchers that they purchase at pick and pay. Remember now the intermediary pick and pay does not become an intermediary because our intermediaries must be online like Android, uh, like Google Play. So it must be a digital intermediary. So traditional intermediary do not apply. So if I go to pick and pay and I purchase a voucher that I can redeem online to get access or to make a payment to watch Netflix. I did not purchase it. Uh, I did not get access through the intermediary. I, I got access directly through the website, uh, which is the supplier site. Hence, I say pick and pay will not fall under intermediaries. That's a common. Uh, a common um, mistake that I sometimes find when I'm marking. EFTs as well. EFTs. They will apply under uh, OK. Let's firstly, before I confuse you, let me finish this one. Payment at intermediary site. So. If they can pay maybe with e bucks, maybe from FNB, or maybe if they can link their account, we know with Showmax you can link it to your DSTV and so on. But if it also maybe allows you to pay through Vodacom, maybe you can link it to your Vodacom bill and so on. It becomes part of intermediaries. And number four, uh, promotion. On a general knowledge uh, with Netflix, we can say they've got number one is theory. So we'll, we'll always have something like that as theory. Under advertising, if maybe they indicated that they have a YouTube campaign, And we've got more details about that in the case study. We can include that as part of advertising and our sales promotion. Our 14 days trial. It's still part of promotion or sales promotion because it, remember the term sales promotion, it says a sample of a product. That's what you are getting. And it would also be a discount. So if maybe there's also indicate that uh, there is uh, maybe first time users they can subscribe uh, for 50% discount if they bundle with uh, 
MTN or something like that. So anything that we find that is more sales promotions and it's online, meaning that the customer does not actually see this advert in a traditional store, maybe sees them on social media. And if they do have that on social media, it will be public relations. So when you advertise on social media, we should just remember every time is not advertising. Uh, it's public relations whereby maybe they've got a Facebook sponsored ad because the attention or the concern is about the comments. It's about how, what do people think about a specific advert where LCA is usually about brand awareness and so on, like TV advert and so on. So in a nutshell, this is what we have. And before, before I continue with the remaining slides, um, what I need you to do, uh, and we can participate and take a little break for about three minutes. So in this case, uh, before half pass, from half pass, I'll continue with the slides. So any observation, anything, any comment, anything that you've learned. So in the chat box, you can participate by writing any of your observation. You can feel free to unmute the mic. Uh, you can also basically uh, just write anything that you feel like maybe Netflix, we can add in our practical example that you can think about and say maybe Netflix under product, uh, maybe we did not consider something. So I will pause for two seconds on my side. Don't mind the silence and you can just do a quick reflection on that. Okay, and uh, Senzi, uh, thank you for customization. Can we also say we can uh, save uh, shows to watch later? Uh, for example, if they can, uh, customers can download that on Wi Fi, it's part of the product, I agree, and it will be part of customization there. And it can also be part of uh, cost reduction. So most of the elements of the value proposition, they talk to each other. The important part is to include it under product. So it can be customization, it can be cost reduction there. Then we get the 
people element, physical evidence, and the process. But we do this differently than the slide. So we're going to start with process. And in our class diary, uh, we will show you how you develop it in the case study. It's not done the same way we're doing for product price uh, promotion, meaning that we don't do them isolated or singularity or individually. We do them as a process of each day. So usually we will have process first. And the process usually it's recommended to have at least five steps in the process. So the term process, it says steps. So you cannot say uh, you are illustrating a process and you don't have steps. So every time we think about process, we're thinking about a figure or an illustration uh, that shows us the steps. So step one, what does the customer do? So this could be a process, for example, to sign in or to sign up, meaning that they are joining Netflix. So the first thing that a customer does, maybe they create a profile. So we must always indicate the process. And when we indicate the process, we will, some of the answers will not be from the case study. You must visualize the process. So before they create a profile, I think maybe they will see an advert somewhere. So let's say a person watch YouTube ad, a step one, and clicks on the link. And it takes them to create a profile. And then when they, after they created a profile, maybe the process says they must choose a package or subscription. And in this case, they can start the trial afterwards. And with step number five, it could be whereby a customer makes a first payment or the customer cancel subscription. It is possible. Or they start watching movies. So as long as we've got the process, meaning that we can see customer journey throughout the process. And we should provide synergy between the process and the people element, as well as the physical evidence. So we start with physical evidence. And this question asks us, while customers are watching an ad or they are clicking on the link, what are the physical, tangible things that they will see regarding the brand? So in this case, maybe they see, uh, let's say a TV show. Maybe Netflix is famous or maybe the highest test the TV show and they promote that on social media. Maybe they see the highest TV show trailer. 
and they see Netflix logo. And we can identify other physical elements. But the goal is to have those physical elements under each step here. And then when they create the profile, what does customer see as physical evidence there? Maybe they see a Google sign in, meaning that the customer can use their existing email address to sign in or they see a Facebook, we refer to this as social, social media uh, sign in. Maybe they also see what we refer to as an online form. And we say maybe they see that uh, where they complete their information, they see their profile, for example. Meaning they can see their display picture if they can customize that on their profile. We just have to remember that they haven't started watching the show. They are just still completing the information about themselves. And that's the physical evidence that we should talk about. And we also want to put our focus in terms of organization physical evidence. So what do they see about Netflix in general? That's what we are trying to achieve here. And one of the content that they will see about Netflix, which is organizational content, when they choose subscription, maybe they will see prices, which uh, could also be packages, uh, features, for example, those features could be uh, HD, five devices, maybe for certain packages that they see them. And our packages, we did indicate we've got basic, standard, as well as premium. It's important to always have your answers with practical answers, meaning that if I say prices here, yeah, I can use that to another case study, then it's not practical. So as soon as you add maybe the prices relevant to the case that you are dealing with, at least you are more practical. And then when they start the trial, they see TV shows. Uh, they see trending movies. And then maybe they see website design elements, uh, which include uh, the pause button, the play, the forward. So all those web website design elements will play a huge part of physical evidence. And when they cancel the subscription, usually maybe they will see a refund policy. And maybe uh, they will see a survey, it's possible, uh, whereby uh, they indicate why are you leaving and so on. And then we get the people element. So you will see with this one, you try to be creative. And you also indicate what process you are dealing with. So it could be a new customer. 
as a process sometimes we can talk about troubleshooting or customer needs help and when the customer needs help maybe it's an existing customer or the process it becomes different meaning that step one maybe the customer uh, log into their account so it's no longer about creating a profile it's sign in or log in and then maybe they step number two they click help uh, they start the video chat uh, they submit an invoice or a ticket so depending on the process that you are dealing with so you can have different processes sometimes the process can be about gumtree and country you've got sellers and the sellers are the one having a different process maybe they will upload pictures they will put price information and you've got customers whereby they watch or they go through the adverts there so you should just remember that you can have different processes and then we come to people element and now we can go back to the slides before we cover that. So you will see now on the slide what the slide uh, is telling us. Firstly, is the objective of the process. Our objective is to offer efficient service process, and this is achieved by database in integration, where we integrate the database about customers, their location, and then we are able to give them a online tracking system and so on. But now the online stock availability checking in our process, this will be, for example, step number four because they are checking what stock is available what movies customers they have there what tv shows because netflix have different shows and so on so they can only see that through the trial if we are selling the product a physical product uh, that's whereby they start to browse the catalog and so on so don't get confused uh, when you write about the process for your assessment, you illustrate it like we did, not in this format. Physical evidence, you can see now we give uh, in this slide, they've got more example of your physical evidence. Our objective is to reassure service quality to online visitors. And this is achieved through data privacy as well as security because people they are skeptical about purchasing online so how can we reassure that we're going to provide good quality service to them the reviews works quite a lot so you will see if our process was different and in this case instead of saying creating a profile we say a customer downloads an app, for example. So we say they download an app. When they download the app, you can see now the reviews of Netflix and ratings will be available throughout that process since they are on that slide. But the slide doesn't show you the relationship between the physical evidence as well as the step. Refund policies, we've put them in the last step, maybe when they cancel. Security icons, those where website design elements, they can even view map and so on. So I want to come to the people element. And we add that into our practical example. Our objective with the people element is to enable customers to get information they need faster and they should get that information at the reduced cost. Common mistake that we usually find in the assessment is in this case, uh, we usually find students indicating a telephone number. Just take into account the telephone number is not a digital or online tool. 
Yeah, it's still traditional. So at the back of our heads, every time we do a digital marketing plan, we always think about everything must be online, nothing that is traditional because that's a common mistake. So the people element, telephone number does not apply. We include things such as email. If customers can be able to communicate to us through email, the auto responders, maybe they are making an online payment and then it gives them an invoice immediately. So this is automation that you see number one. And this is usually true uh, as well as it could also be part of automation. Because usually they don't type the email. Is the system live chat? That's when we start to get a physical person on the other side. So live chat explaining how a customer can resolve an issue. You've got an example at the bottom of the slide there. How can we help you? Can you send me latest offers? And you've got online customer segmentation. This is whereby we segment issues that customers have. Maybe they are looking for support. This is part of customer segmentation, for example, frequently asked questions, the topics and so on. So as long as we group customers in terms of their needs of what they are looking for. And we are not limited to this. If they have a chat board, we include the chat board somewhere. If they have a WhatsApp, uh, we include it as well. So this is just the basic idea. The case study is the one that's going to give you the practical answers that you should include. So in this case, customers watch a YouTube ad, they click on the link, and during that stage, they saw the high TV show trailer and Netflix logo. If they have problems during that stage or they need help or they need more information, what are we providing customers with? So in this case, if we are providing customers with frequently asked questions, how do you sign up? Uh, what payment methods are accepted and so on? It's part of the people element when they create a profile. And now when they create a profile, we want to do verification alert and we do a email text alert. And we get this from the case study. We motivate to make them practical. For example, in this case, we can say something such as uh, which TV shows are available in South Africa. Maybe a person we ask answer those questions in a frequently asked question and that becomes limited to this case study. That's the goal. Email text alert and this is whereby they sign in and maybe we provide the verification code. And in this case, maybe uh, we give them a link. And in that link, maybe they verify their profile. Same with people element when they choose a subscription and they see all these prices. Maybe here we have got autoresponders. And these autoresponders usually it's for payment method because at this stage they choose a subscription, they choose the prices. So this could be, for example, uh, for credit cards or or David cards and so on. When they start the trial and they watch TV shows, if they experience issues here, maybe for example, the app itself, it's freezing or their payment, it says they did not actually 
was not processed or they want a refund, but during this stage, they are already watching a TV show or maybe they are looking for a specific TV show and it's not here. What can they do to find help? So if Netflix have an online form, and maybe that online form it could also be a suggestion for movies whereby people indicate if they have a specific movie that they want to be added it will be part of the people element and when they cancel their subscription and they want a, they see a refund policies maybe they still need help they can start the live chat which is uh, people element. So this is how we do the digital marketing plan in terms of process, physical evidence and people. In an assessment, there's also marks for theory, which is objectives. Just remember that. Uh, and when we talk about that, we're talking about this digital marketing objective. So we must always indicate that our objective is to enable customers to get information faster if we are talking about people element there. Eh? And the last P that we have is partnership. Uh, the goal is to co collaborate with other digital alliances to access big data, so we must have an alliance or we must actually have a relationship with uh, other online companies in order for us to share the data and access big data there. The first one, as a practical example, it could be a big data alliance. And with big data alliance, you've got social media or email account login. You've got a practical example. I think TikTok, yeah, TikTok is doing a very good work with that big data alliances is very few apps or very few organizations that can allow you to use so many options to sign in to your account so you will see tiktok has partnered with these social media alliances so that it can easily be verified and a customer creating a new profile creating their name and so on If we partnered with service providers, this could be for payment authorization, like you see on the slide, whereby a customer is making a payment and they can use maybe their Vodacom account or they can use, uh, they can pay using Visa. So this company is actually partnered or collaborated with all these digital alliances, Visa, PayPal, Showmax, order come in order to for customers to make payment so we input any partner that we think about uh, we just have to classify what type of a partner that is app submission we've covered this part in the place element so if we've got an app and it goes to android or it goes to apple we must partner with with those uh, operating system first so that our app can run. So when we submit, we follow their guidelines there. And you'll remember ad supported content in terms of prices, whereby a customer watch a, an advert in order to make a payment. So there is a partnership that goes through whereby we partner with advertisers in order to increase sales. So these are not all the partners that you will usually find in the case study. You just have to think about online partners. That's the first rule. So I don't indicate partners which are traditional. For example, maybe we partnered with government and there's nothing online there. We cannot include that. So if maybe we are a to make an example, maybe we are a, 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 home in a, a, a home for older people and Department of Social Development partner with us just to provide care for elderly people. We cannot include 
dead here. Hence, there was nothing digital in partnership. So when we talk about partners, we must see digital content. We must see digital payment, uh, YouTube ads, and so on. So going back to our example here, we will have partnership. And now with partnership, we do it the same way we were doing the previous one. So if we know there is a Netflix app, meaning we've got an app submission partners, and this we already know we've partnered with those as an example. Most of the time, your answers for partnership will will not be new, so we'll be coming throughout the case study. So, if somewhere we partnered with a social media for social sign in, and it allows customers to sign in easily, we can include that. And maybe this was for sign in uh, using Google as an example. Or it could be a new partnership. So to be a bit creative here, let's say the case study indicated that Netflix has partnered Uh, with DSTV, whereby, like Showmax, whereby they will show South African content. So, this could also be sports and so on. So, if the content is available online, we see at least it's part of the partnership that is online. And basically, we have our digital marketing plan. And this is just the first aspect, which is situation analysis. And you will see most of the time in your assessment, this part carries most of the marks. And this is chapter two. Once we have developed This situation analysis, we, we get an idea of what the organization is, where it is in the market, what is their gaps, what is their weaknesses, where are they lacking, uh, where it needs improvements, and so on. And that's why we go back to chapter one afterwards and develop objectives for the company. So if you've missed maybe that class last week you can watch the recording but on chapter one you've got objectives for example our objective is to sell we must indicate how we're going to achieve that for netflix uh, to serve we must indicate uh, to speak uh, to save and this is about company cost and lastly to sizzle so what you need to understand about objectives is that this should be your own ideas most of the time. So it's not what they are currently doing. It's what you think they should do. So in this case, you'll see the term should being used quite a lot in developing objectives because we are suggesting they should run a YouTube campaign and offer customers 50% discount. So it's not what they are currently doing, but with situation analysis, it's what they are currently doing. And that's the difference between the first step and the second step. This is research. This is where we start our own, to have our own voice, uh, to be creative. You'll remember the source stack. 
we go to the abbreviation strategy. And now with strategy, we've got three strategies that we use digitally, uh, social marketing, and with social media marketing, we are looking into detail regarding this in chapter five. And we've got the website as a strategy, and we will look into it in chapter six. And we've got the smartphone app as a strategy, how we can develop that, and we look into that in chapter six. And then we come to the abbreviation so stack, uh, that is T. And those are perfect building techniques. And they refer to them as tactics. And this is whereby we can suggest that they can use paper click, um, they can use banner advertising, so they can use newsletters and so on to build traffic. So it's about traffic building to build traffic to these strategies that we've mentioned here. So once we have a, a social media page, at least people should like our page. People should come to the, our website. People should download our app. How do we do that? We use those traffic building techniques and we we'll look that in a year, uh, which is chapter seven, and then you get actions and control. And that's the last part of your digital marketing plan here, and that's chapter 10. And with chapter 10, you will see we skip chapter eight, um, as well as chapter nine. And that you will see in a, our year plan mostly. So, the last slide for chapter two, you will see, tells us about doing a reflection by doing class activity two, which is Gumtree case study. So, what you need to do is on Brightspace or my tutor, you'll see you've got learning activity two. And this is under learning unit uh, under chapter two. So we need to read this case study and understand this case study and see how it applies to digital marketing. And uh, we do a reflection on it by doing an online quiz as well as to see what type of questions they have there. So right now it's Four minutes past seven. So we will say uh, learning activity two. And in this case, the first step that we need to do in order to participate in this learning activity and reflect and see if we will be able to answer questions related to this chapter is to read the case study, which is country. So you download, you download learning activity and read the country case study. So I'll give it about 10 minutes, uh, about five minutes, sorry, just to read the case study because that is just for understanding of what is happening. We are not reading to answer questions, uh, so we're just reading for general ideas. So up until 10 past, let's quickly read that case study. Don't mind the silence, I'll also be reading the case study on my side.
Okay, now we have an idea of what Gumtree is doing. Uh, let's look at the questions now, uh, which are usually asked, and if we can be able to answer those questions. So it says, discuss the case study and how it applies to digital marketing theory by answering the following questions, and you need to motivate each answer. Uh, firstly, uh, they wanted us you to discuss the evolution of marketing mix and state at which stage uh, it applies more to Gumtree case study. So you've got the slide telling you about the evolution uh, from 1947 there or 1943, and you indicate which stage applies more to the Gumtree case study. And number two was analyze online tools of marketing remix, the eight piece used by Gumtree, and you'll see 16 marks there. So under product, at least you mentioned something about content, what type of content is there. You also mentioned something else about the online value proposition, so that it's at, at least two practical examples for uh, each of the piece. Uh, price, you mentioned something, whether the subscription is free access or what. And you indicate the any other price method, you see the place where people access country on the online platform. Number three was asking us uh, to suggest two online digital tools for each marketing remix that country should consider. So as you analyze throughout the eight piece, for example, maybe you come to the process that country is using and you identify they don't have chat boards under people under certain step, maybe they can include that. We already know they've got safety tips there and there. Uh, so we suggest based on the slide. So the slide will give us the tools. If country does not use those online tools, we can suggest that they can consider that. If maybe they have a uh, purchase at uh, supplier site it's not applicable to country meaning i cannot purchase a used good using an online credit card and we try to motivate that maybe they can consider that whereby country actually works like cash crusaders in a way whereby customers can purchase second hand goods online and pay for those second goods online and then organize objectives of digital marketing into eight components of the of the remix. So you'll remember it under each slide we had, for example, product and there was an objective for a product, meaning we want to offer interaction, we want to offer engagement, and uh, we under price we want to offer basically a range of purchase options. That's our objective. Uh, under place alternative locations and we motivate our answers a bit there. And we're going to try and see if we can reflect on this by actually uh, using the quizzes game. So for now, try and see if you can think about practical answers after reading the case study while I start the quiz. And the quiz will have obviously uh, similar questions and those similar questions you'll answer them based uh, on the quiz game there. So try and reflect firstly. And while you are reflecting on that country case study, uh, feel free to unmute the mic uh, if you have any questions and you can ask any questions or basically your thoughts uh, on the case study before we start with the quiz.
Okay, I'm sure by now yeah, you have an idea of maybe how you can answer some questions. So I'm going to start the quiz and I'm going to share a link in the chat box. Uh, you use any nickname in the quiz and it's have about 10 questions, the quiz. Uh, so I will monitor it as you play and it's going to be a live quiz, but it should take you less than five to 10 minutes. So by Cora pass or by 20 pass, depending on how you play. We. Uh, we can see uh, when to end the quiz. So as you play the quiz, uh, answering those questions, you'll also encourage that you take a glance at the main screen showing the scores. So in the chat box, I've posted the link to join the quiz. So you just click the link and it will take you directly to the quiz and it's about the country case study. And don't mind the silent on my side. So I'll be quiet, but I'll be monitoring. So uh, we will continue basically uh, once you've done with the quiz and do a quick reflection. Okay, good luck.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for participating. Uh, please note I'll end the quiz now in the next one to two minutes so we can quickly do a reflection and see which answers give you a problem. So one to two minutes to finish. All right, uh, let's see which questions gave you a hard time. And in this case, and see if we can provide some motivation why uh, those questions were hard or uh, what could be the correct answer. Uh, Tsepang, congratulations for being number one on the quiz. Would you unmute the mic uh, if possible and send a shout out? Uh, oh, Tsepang? <laughs> shout out to who? Uh, shout out to the class. Uh. Yeah, shout out to the class for participating and shout out to you for being number one there. So let's come to questions and look in those which were kind of like a red flag. So you'll see question number two uh, was more of a red flag. So question number two was asking according to the case study, Classified adverts are either free or they are paid for. Which online purchase option is offered by country in the above example? And in this case, you will see most of you chose at support and content and price transparency, where else the memorandum classified that as pay-per-view, meaning that you pay for the advert uh, if you want it. If you don't want the advert, you don't purchase. So these are in-app purchases. Remember with pay-per-view, you only pay if you need it or if you want that transaction or, or want to watch that show. So in this case, if you want the advert to be bumped or to have more visibility, you can pay for it. If you don't want, you can leave it. And that's what pay-per-view is about. I wouldn't blame you much if you indicated it's price transparency, but it's definitely not at supported content. At supported content, it will be whereby uh, people get uh, features uh, of, of paid adverts by watching the, the promotion or watching a YouTube ad or something like that. Question number three. Uh, this one, according to the case study, Gumtree uses social media to communicate news and information about the brand. Which two communication tools are being integrated to online by Gumtree? So it asked for two, uh, you had to match. So at this case, I see most of you were able to pick up advertising is part of it because you can see they are using it for, for actually promoting the brand. And you will see it also says to communicate news, which is more like public relations when you communicate news there. Most of you chose sales promotion and I, I would, uh, I think maybe there was uh, at the back of your head, it was a, the sentence about competitions and that was a separate comp uh, sentence where it says uh, to launch competitions and so on. So not applicable here. And question six, according to the case study in 2010, 
The site began selling classified advertising packages to companies looking to post multiple job vacancies and properties. And we wanted to identify which online purchase option uh, is offered by Gumtree. So it's bundling in this case because they want to sell multiple uh, job vacancies. As it says, it's bundling. Most of you chose had supported content. So we might want to revise what is ad supported content so as soon as you are on youtube and uh, you watch basically any anything on youtube usually music videos uh, and you've got an advert and that advert it gives us access we must watch this advert before we watch a music video that's what ad supported content is so in this case YouTube is making money through this advert and we are getting access by watching the advert. So just keep that in mind about what is ad supported content or whereby you gain coins and so on in an online gaming platform. Question eight and nine. Uh, question eight was asking us, according to a case study, posting goods online is faster and it requires a mandatory registration and image uploads to improve the quality of listing found on the site. Uh, which component of the marketing mix is being integrated online by Gumtree? So this is the process part before I, uh, it's a process for sellers, meaning that when this is gonna be one of the steps, we know that at one of the steps we'll say maybe step one, create an account, step number two, uh, post image, which is a must uh, in this case. So some reason we've got people who chose promotion, but promotion is about Gumtree advertising itself, so it can't be. And the last question that was a red flag is question nine. According to the case study, the website also provides safety tips, technical support and contact form to assist customers or answering any concerns and that was people element meaning that when they're looking for information faster they can read under safety tips they can click technical support or just request information via a contact form uh, i would understand why most why some of the answers are part of physical evidence and process because you'll remember now uh, in this class we said we are going to look into this thing as a synergy between them. So when I see safety tips, it can be physical evidence. I agree. Uh, when someone sees uh, something such as a contact form, it can also be some part of people contact form. And then when uh, on the website, when I see technical support, maybe that could be a part of the process where I click uh, help and I, I provide. So yeah, those answers, all of three actually are correct in this case. And I see the most question that was answered correctly is question number four. There were no problems with these questions. All of you were able to identify that social media is public relations in this case. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the last uh, basically part of the class. So uh, we today we covered chapter two. You will just remember that chapter two in the digital marketing plan, it becomes step one, which is situation analysis. And as well as those three elements, the process, we do them differently. We try to show synergy between them. So uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, please, at this case, do me a favor and in the chat box, uh, just sign the attendance register, uh, comment with any uh, emoticon face there, uh, could represent your mood. It could also be just uh, for attendance register purposes. So uh, we come to the last session of, of the class. So have a lovely evening. You can, if you have any question, you feel free to unmute the mic and uh, good night.